Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this special Photoshop Elements project we're going to take a look at replacing a boring background with an exciting one. So I'm going to take this up here which has this just kind of a, a very subtle gradient happening up here and we're going to replace that with this far more interesting background with some mountains in here and stuff much more interesting to look at. It's a fairly straightforward process on doing this just a little bit of trickiness right around the cockpit one we'll talk about that as we get down to that point. So let's take a look and see how this is done. We're going to be starting with two pictures. First this one this is our image this is something which I grabbed off of the internet this is a public domain picture and I have a link to this in the description in the materials section so you can find that link if you want to download the picture and follow along yourself on this video other picture over here this is one that I took ages and ages ago this is out at uh, Joshua Tree National Monument in California and I'll stick this in behind this one so there's our our starting point the first thing I want to do as I always do is to make a copy of this background layer I'm just going to take this drag it up here to our new layer button hide the background and work on that copy it just gives me a safety in case I mess up I can always go back to the original let me just bring back up our background picture here I'm going to drag this over there it is now it's too small but that's fine it'll, it'll work and let's dock this up here at this point so let's put this or resize this rather to fit so click on the select tool here I'll extend a remove tool and I'm just going to grab these edges here and drag this up until it fits in it's basically the same ratio as the original picture so I don't need to worry about that and there we go it's all snapping to the edges that's fine choose OK so there's our picture now sitting in behind like that in behind the photograph once I have cleaned out this background here we'll be able to see this through the background and we can then choose if we want to move that around resize it whatever but for now it's basically in the right spot okay now we need to come in here and clean out this background that requires making a selection around all this stuff and deleting that background I'm gonna do a couple of things in here first off I'm gonna put a new layer behind our background image there it is and I want to fill that layer with white so let's come down and go to our paint bucket tool there we go make sure you're on paint in here foreground color fill let's go up to view actually window rather here we go and bring up our color swatches and let's make sure we're on white there we go and I'm just going to fill that so it just fills that with white that way as we're making our selection and taking out the background I'll have a nice clean thing to look at I can then hide or show that to see the background in behind it just gives us a clean a clean place to work okay we can start in here now by getting rid of some of that background I can start off with a an eraser tool let's just bring this up let's check our eraser here I think that was pretty good 19 hard we'll start off with that go to a brush mode and then let's adjust the size way too big there we go up onto the correct 
layer there. I'm just going to quickly erase a lot of this stuff just to get it out of the way. That helps me to begin to see what it is I'm doing, kind of begin to visualize what I want to do. There we go. Now if I hide that white layer, there's that background showing through. We're going to tweak the background a little later on once we get down to that point and make it look a little more interesting, brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so nice little basic cleanup. Let's now grab one of our selection tools. I like the polygonal lasso tool, my personal favorite. And we're going to zoom in on the edge. Now you can notice in here that this is a JPEG picture. It's been reduced you know, and has some of that JPEG artifact in which you get around shapes like this. That's just part of the process of reducing the file size for the JPEG format. Now I think this picture may have actually had a new background put in at some point. Again, I, I got this off the internet, but it looks to me as if there's some transparency showing in there. Some transparency effect. So I think that somebody put in their own background on this, put in that gradient, and just didn't do a very good job of that. We can do a much, much better job. All right, let's come in and I'm going to zoom out just a touch here. We don't need to be in too tight for this. Polygonal lasso tool. See, there it is. I'll start outside and then come down and begin coming right along the edge. Now, if you need to be over the edge at all, it's better to be inside than it is to be outside, especially on background or unimportant areas like this. The whole key here with the polygonal lasso tool is just to take your time. And each time you click, it puts in a point, and you can then pull a line from that point. The more points you put in, the smoother of a curve effect you get. The fewer points, the larger straight lines you have. Just kind of eyeball it and work around your shapes. Now we're not going to be doing everything all at once here with this. We'll be doing this in, in chunks and saving the most difficult for last. I tend to like to do that as I'm doing this kind of cleanup. Okay, right there I'm going to come around just a little ways around the tail here, but not all the way. Get right to the top there. Okay, now I'm just going to go just up against the ruler there. And let's quickly finish off this bit, come back to my starting point. You see why I, I began outside? It's just easy to find the beginning of my selection. There I go hit the delete key and that cleans that out. So that's our first one. Let's deselect that. So it's a matter now of just going through and cleaning this stuff out a bit at a time. Okay, here's the one of the tricky parts. And that's our canopy in here. It's kind of hard to see, but it curves down like that. You can see you can see the bottom of it right here and you can see the top up here. And it's going over there. It's kind of hiding that antenna right there. You can't really see the antenna through the canopy. So it gives you an idea of where that shape is. We'll make sure we get that correctly. Again, I'm going to start out here where I can spot my beginning piece. And let's just then come back in and work in and do a careful selection. And again, just take your time if you're using this polygonal lasso tool. Make sure you don't click too quickly. If you click too fast, it's going to set in your selection and you'll have to start over again. I'll just, show, I'll just click twice like that. That's what happens. It just closes that selection and it probably isn't where you want it. So make sure you don't click too quickly. So you know, take, take a breath between each one of your clicks takes a little longer, but you're not going to get messed up like that. As long as you do what I'm doing and just you know work a piece at a time, you'll be okay. Another reason to only do a piece at a time is in case you mess up, 
you're only going to have to redo part of the work. You don't have to redo everything. Okay, now let's carefully come around around this. If you're a little bit off, we can clean that up later. And I'm going to stop right there at that point of the cockpit. And I'm going to get just this piece in there. Notice as I come right over the beginning, the cursor there changes the little circle next to it. That lets me know that it closes at that point. Okay, hit the delete key. Actually, I missed a part. I forgot to go around the antenna. So I want to remove that bit from my selection. This is my selection. I want to remove that from my selection. So let's go down here to our lasso tools. Click on this option. This is subtract from selection. And let's just quickly make a little selection around that antenna. Like that. That removes that from the selection. There we go. Hit the delete key. Cleans that out. Okay, we can deselect. Go back to new selection. And just a process then of going around and getting all of these pieces like this. Let's just talk about the rest of this. I'm going to do most of this off camera so you don't have to sit here and watch me do all this selection. We're going to go around here, of course, around the propeller blades. No big deal there, nothing unusual on that. And then you know, around the buildings back here. I'm not going to do anything down here. I'll leave that as is. It kind of looks like it's maybe part of the building. That's just going to blend in fine. If you want to, you could you know come down here and do a little selection in there. I don't think we need to on this particular image. Go around there. Now this bit here, this little thing, thing coming in, this is part of this helicopter over here. So I need to do a careful selection around whatever this stuff is. Hard to see, so I'm just going to make that up. And inside this area here, and inside that little area there and that little area right back in there. So that's what I'll be doing and I'll go ahead and I'll finish that bit of the selection off camera. I think I'll, I'll come right down to this little bit here too. So I'll finish that off camera so you don't have to sit here and watch me doing all this selection. But the same thing that I've been doing before here, just going to select that and then hit the delete key and clean that out. Okay, I'll pause the video right now. I'll finish this clean out and then bring the video right back up. Okay, there we go. I finished that up. Let's just fit that on screen and let's hide that white layer. So there's the background layer. Looks pretty good, but we want to adjust the background a bit, make it a little more interesting. And then we'll come back in. We'll do a little bit of adjustment and cleanup on the edges in here and fix that cockpit. I want to see a little more of the mountain in behind this. I'm going to take this background picture no, on the wrong layer there. Come down there. There we go. I'm just going to use the cursor keys. Now we're just going to edge that up a bit. A little more interest on the picture. Just getting that a little different position. I wanted enough so I could see some you know, just complete mountain in behind the cockpit. And I have a little bit of the mountain showing up here behind that propeller blade and then mountain in behind there. I think it makes a little better looking picture. Let's now adjust that layer and make it a bit more interesting to match the picture. The picture is very very bright. The image is a little bit dark. It's a little bit fuzzy. Now the fuzziness is not that important because it is in the background. Let's go up to enhance in here and I'm going to make it a little bit brighter first. Let's take care of our lightning. We have a shadow and highlights tool right here. And let's just see what happens on this. That's not doing too much. I think I'll leave that down towards the dark side. A little better here, bringing up the mid-tone contrast. That helps. It's kind of working back and forth on that a little bit. It's still not quite what I want. Let's bring in our brightness contrast. And let's brighten that up a little bit. Now we're getting there. I'm just trying to find a value that feels like it's part of the same picture. And a little more contrast in there. 
Again, I'm just eyeballing it, kind of looking at the brightness and contrast in here and mimicking the brightness and contrast back in there. So it looks as if it's all one picture, and that looks pretty good. Okay, I want to sharpen it up just a bit, enhance, and adjust sharpness. See, there it is, it is sharpness. Now we want to make it a little bit sharper as opposed to a little bit softer. So we want to, want to bring that up and kind of sharpen the whole thing up a little bit. So let's just play around with some more controls. What I care about really are the highlights in here in the sky. The skies are midtones. We'll start off with the shadow. See if we get any effect in here on the shadows. Not really anything really noticeable. I'm seeing a little bit on this, but very, very little. Mostly up here with our, our main adjustment. If I go clear to the bottom, you can see that's kind of fuzzy here. Go clear to the top, you see that gets really sharp in there. I'm just eyeballing it to add a little more sharpness to it. I think around here someplace is pretty good. Notice how the radius really tweaks that sharpness. Again, it can be a little bit softer focus than the rest of the picture because it is in behind. But it should be a little sharper. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, that looks nice. That's sharp enough that it looks like it's still a part of the same picture and it's not from some other picture. Okay, that's looking good. Let's now zoom in a little bit and take a look at our edges in here on our items. This is where it, it gets pretty obvious that we're doing some fancy tricks. See right there, that edge is a bit too hard in there. It looks okay here. It's a little too hard up along that edge right there. So I want to fuzz that out. Now I'm going to use a tool over here. This is the smudge tool. And we can bring the size of this brush way down, just like that. And then if I pull just straight across that edge, with the smudge to make sure I'm on, on the right layer. There we go. If I pull straight across with that edge, it just kind of softens up that edge. And make sure you don't pull up or down. That's going to mess things up. But just right across the edge. And it just kind of smears the edge a little bit. And it helps to blend that edge into the background. Some edges won't need this. Some edges, this does a real nice job. It's just enough. It's, it's really for these background items more than anything else. If it's a foreground item, you, you might want to just stay a little sharper on the foreground. You're going to be okay with that. The background is a, is a bigger deal. That's okay. That's all right. You see here, it, it maybe is just a little too hard, it should be a little softer, so I'm just doing just a little pull along that edge. And it just kind of softens up the edge. Make sure you go right along the edge, don't do too much. Just where it's a little too sharp. To give us a little bit of blending in on those background items. Helicopter is foreground, so that can stay sharper, that's fine. Although right here, it looks a little bit rough. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit along that edge. Okay, that cleans that up. Now all this kind of weird stuff here, this is just the JPEG artifacts from this being a picture that I found on the internet. Nothing really to do about that. I could if I wanted to come in here and, you know, and do a little bit of clone stamping and stuff, try to remove some of that effect, but for our demo here, that's not important. I'm not trying to make a perfect picture, just trying to show you a technique. Okay, everything looks good. All the edges are fine. See how these now blend in the background a little bit better. Looks a little more realistic at this point. This edge being hard is fine because it's right in the foreground. The last thing I want to do is to adjust the canopy here and bring a little bit of the background color into the canopy area. And a couple different ways of doing this. Basically, I want to make this a little bit transparent and show a little bit of that color in from that background. 
and this requires again making making selections in here to bring that in just bring that in a little bit one way is to make a careful selection of just the canopy in here take that selection copy some of the background in that shape put it above here in a layer above there copy the canopy put that above then blend those together another way, way is just to make your selections and put in this color in here and then blend those in we'll see how those work we'll do a couple of different things on this so grab your polygonal lasso tool and this time I want to come in and I'm just selecting just the glass part of the canopy you have a little bit of white edge showing around that that's okay that's going to look realistic probably should be a little bit of a, a light or thin edge showing in there that kind of gives you the effect of a thickness on the glass so there's part of this let's move down here Sarah says add I want to add because I'm going to be adding in more of this to my selection and just a bit in here again very very subtle little selection just real small pieces there we go now that is part of the seat in there so I'm going to leave that alone and I'm just coming in here and grabbing just the canopy area here we go and again this coming around here like that and getting the rest of this canopy and again, leaving a little bit of that lightness showing on the edge is just fine okay when I have just the canopy area selected on this I'm now going to make a new layer on this and save this selection I'll do a couple of those let's first save the selection we, did, we took some time on that so save it I may not need to have that saved but that's just a, a safety just just in case okay now I want to take this and I want to cut the canopy out put it on its own layer so we're going to go up here to layer and new layer via cut there goes the canopy is now up here if I hide that layer you can see how that canopy has now been hidden and it's now on its own layer up here what that does for us is it allows me now to come in here and adjust the opacity of just that canopy part right here so let's just pull the opacity down a little bit and by doing that there we go it doesn't take much it allows me to show some of that background through so the background coloration through that canopy so that it then makes that really blend in to the picture again there it is without looks kind of thick like it's been pasted on and then just a little bit of an opacity shift makes the glass a little more transparent and we can see those shapes and colors in behind and that gives us that effect of it being a transparent canopy and we're actually seeing through it there we go okay let's go ahead and fit on screen and there it is there is our nicely clean picture with that new background placed in there and adjusted to fit okay I have just a few comments on this technique in here let me just hide that stuff and let's fit on screen a bit better just a few comments on this on things that you can can do now one nice thing about this is we have the background on its own layer so I can always take the background out now and put something else in there so I can blend it with a different picture so anything I put on that layer I can now use as a background for instance I can put a gradient in here let's make a new layer there we go go to our gradient tool and let's look at a 
a black to white gradient, that's fine. And I'll pull from top to bottom, put in a gradient. There we go. So you can change the background to any background you want once you have that background clean. Now if you change the background, you may want to adjust the transparency of the canopy layer, which is where it says layer 3 right now. You want to adjust that transparency to match. If it's a darker background, you want this a little more transparent. If it's a lighter background, this can be a little less transparent. Whatever looks good on that. Also, depending upon the edges and the background, you may need to adjust your edges. Now, I left these alone and left these being very, very sharp because that worked against this background. It's real light in there and it worked just fine. On this gradient, it doesn't work as well. So I'd come back in and I would I'd smooth out those edges a little bit on this kind of gradient background. Just make that a little bit, a little bit better. So there you go. Just a, a couple of thoughts on that. The real trick, as you can see here, there's really only two tricks. One is taking your time on making that selection, make it as clean as possible. And the second one is that little trick there with the canopy. That makes all the difference actually on this picture. And I can show you that on this one shot. If I just come in here and let's lighten this up, we have 86%. I'll put in 100% up here. There we go. It looks a little more fake at 100%. I put that back to 83. It just kind of blends that into the background a lot better. So that's the real trick on this particular picture is that canopy, just getting that canopy to blend in with the background. That really sells the pictures. Little details like that that will really sell the picture. Okay, so there we go. That's how to replace a background with a more interesting background. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.